This is why we do this. This, this, is, this is why we work in the industry that we do. This is why I work in the industry that I do. This is so cool. This is so cool. Growing up in Detroit, I didn't know much about hockey in the Pacific Northwest. And why should I? Washington hasn't had a professional hockey team since 1975, which was long before I was born, and neither has Oregon or Idaho. And yet, Seattle still has the same amount of Stanley Cup victories as that city to the north. The Midwest and East Coast seem littered with NHL teams, while the Pacific Northwest looks like a desert. I knew of the Western Hockey League with Seattle and Everett, Tri-Cities and Spokane, but that's about it. To learn more, I combed through the internet, read books, I made calls, but I felt like something was missing. I knew I needed to get out there and see for myself what hockey looks like in the Pacific Northwest. Join me on my journey in episode two of Sightseeing with Fitz. To get a sense of how hockey came to be in this region, I'm going back in time to 1917 when Seattle became the first U.S. city to have its name etched onto Lord Stanley's Cup. The team that brought it home? The Seattle Metropolitans. There's a lot to this story, so I'm heading to Cary Park to talk with Kevin Tyson, author of the book When It Mattered Most, The Forgotten Story of America's First Stanley Cup. What would it have been like in, in this town? What was that atmosphere like? The Metropolitans win the Stanley Cup out here in 1917. It was huge. You know, it was, uh, you, you had Husky football yeah. and Metropolitans hockey back then. And so it's the second year that the organization's there. So it was not unknown anymore, right? It was something that people were passionate about. Uh, they sold out all four games before, uh, you know, within minutes before the, the puck was dropped for the first day. and. Uh, you had little kids climbing up, just like you see in the movies, right? Little yeah. kids up on top, looking through skylights, and kids. So, peering. so that actually happened. Like they're they're up on the roof, like trying to, to peer in and, and see if they can see this hockey team play. Yeah, talking about looking through like the transoms over the doorways, oh just gosh. trying to get in, right? And uh, it was packed. It yeah. was loud, and, uh, and and this city was was passionate. Kevin made it clear Seattle's had a rich hockey history with the Metropolitans, the Totems, and the many teams in between. And it turns out, the notoriously loud and rambunctious Seahawks and Sounders fans might actually just be descendants from Seattle's early hockey teams. I think it's about time I grab my first piece of hockey history with some help from my friends at Ebbets Field Flannels. Yeah, he just said, he just said he'll hand it to his mom. Hello. <laughs> this just feels right. <laughs> oh man, this is amazing. I'm, I'm a Seattleite now. Can you believe that we are this close to cracking hockey? Okay, this is really cool. On the corner of 5th and University, downtown Seattle, you've got the home of the Seattle Ice Arena. Home to the 1917 Stanley Cup champion Mets. I can feel the energy here standing on this hollowed ground. I can feel Bernie Morris's goal and the crowd behind him. So cool to be able to be standing right here on this spot. Seattle's hockey history is just one piece of this puzzle. There's a lot more ground to cover, so I set off on a road trip east of the Cascade Range, and what I found was something truly special. Tucked off the main drag in the little town of Moscow, Idaho, is a three-quarter sized piece of hockey culture and magic. This is unreal! 20 years ago, a few devoted members of this town taught themselves how to build a rink. Now, if that isn't pure passion, I don't know what is. Yeah. So why don't we build our own ice rink? 
And you know how it is. You get a bunch of, bunch of guys. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good <laughs> idea. And Everything sounds like a good idea when you're with your buddies. And 18 months after that game, okay. we opened up this facility. So when we first started, a couple of things that were unique to us. One, we didn't know how to drive a Zamboni. Two, we didn't know how to make ice. Okay. And three. Two things you probably need. <laughs> yeah. And three, no one knew how to skate, except for a few of us who were from out of town. Okay. There was something missing here. Okay. And when we built this ice rink, you know, we were like, if we build it, will they come? And the answer was an overwhelming, yes, we will. Yes, they will indeed. Pete even told me how he runs a program for the local school called Science on Ice, teaching everything from how ice is made to the physics of a figure skating twirl. I was having fun watching the women's tournament going on, but soon as that wrapped up, I was ready to play some hockey myself. I hadn't been on skates in over a year, and even though these kids were skating circles around me, it felt so good to get back on the ice. That's mine right here. Bring them up. Oh! 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 Give me some! Woo! Yes! You get the assist on that one. You like that? <laughs> the best part about that was, I did not do that on purpose. Oh! 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 That didn't feel good. I don't know, did you get that though? I didn't feel good. Oh my God. To see these kids just like, you get goosebumps thinking about it really. As a sport, hockey is so unique. Basketball, you can pick up a ball and find a hoop, you can find a football, find a soccer ball, play with your friends in the street, but hockey, you need a rink, you need gear, you need equipment. You don't have that a lot of places, but to come to a place like this and to see kids and a whole community come together for the greatest game on earth. This is why we do this. This, this, is, this is why we work in the industry that we do. This is why I work in the industry that I do because this is so cool. This is so cool. Moscow, thank you for everything. That was absolutely incredible and I'll definitely be back. Next stop, Spokane. Okay, so we're in Spokane and rumor has it there is this season ticket holder, Kraken season ticket holder and hockey fanatic who has huge ties to the hockey community here in Spokane. Now, normally I don't make a habit of just dropping in on people, but I think today we can make an exception to meet this guy. Let's go. Rob McCann hey. from Spokane. Absolutely. Everett fits you from Detroit. How's it going? Hey. Nice to meet you. For 16 years, Rob and his family were billets for the Western Hockey League Spokane Chiefs, hosting junior players from all across the world so they could pursue their dreams of playing the game they love. Usually three or four years, okay. and uh, we've had 10 guys in 16 years, and eight of them signed NHL contracts. So maybe, eight, maybe there's something in the water here. <laughs> You've had eight NHLers, eight NHLers come through here. Yeah. That's right, if you came to play for the Chiefs and were lucky enough to stay at the McCann's house, you had an 80% chance of heading to the big leagues. Whoa! This is a jersey collection, wow! These are all the NHL teams that uh, our boys have played with. You know, I was coaching 20 years ago, wow. and uh, you know, there's, you could barely scrape a team together, and now there's it's five or six teams at every age level, and wow. uh, that's because kids watch the Chiefs, they watch Tyler Johnson and Derek Ryan, hometown guys who yeah. go to the NHL, and they, they want to do that. And uh, this, the Chiefs have just been really good about just growing the, the concept of hockey in this community. Rob and his wife Rachel continued sharing stories about their players, how they're proud of the men they've become, and how they've continued to return to Spokane to give back to the community. I left the McCanns feeling inspired. See you guys. I've learned so much since starting out on this journey, but there were a couple more stops left to make, so I said goodbye and hit the road once again. 
First up, Moses Lake to look at their outdoor rink and meet with Tom Lose, who told me both men's and women's hockey is growing like crazy. I have a three and a half year old daughter and I started a program called Play Hockey Like a Girl. And the whole idea is to get girls out here, no boys, it's just the girls, yeah. and let's get a chance to just have some fun. My next stop was a couple hours drive to the north in the tiny western town of Winthrop. The rink is home to the annual Puckaroo Tournament and is in one of the most scenic locations I've ever seen. Then it was off to Wenatchee and the Toyota Town Center, home of the Wenatchee Wild of the British Columbia Hockey League. It's 10 U team and it was awesome. It was so cool. Oh! Oh, oh, We've driven over 900 miles on this journey, but I had one last stop to make, and it was one I'd been looking forward to this entire trip. Just a few blocks from my home in the Greenwood neighborhood of Seattle is the Angry Beaver, a favorite spot for the local hockey community. Owner Tim Pipes is all about celebrating the game. He once opened the bar at 3 a.m. just so fans could watch a Sochi Olympic hockey game. Correct. But you have a Kraken tattoo. I just was in love with the design when I first saw it. So there you have it. I set out to answer the question, what does hockey look like in the Pacific Northwest? Well, if you ask me, it looks pretty darn special. It looks like kids taking their first steps onto the ice and volunteers building rinks, people caring for their stars of the future and honoring our past. Thank you to those incredible people for telling their stories, and thanks to all of you for joining me on this journey. We'll see you next time on Sightseeing with Fitz.